Welcome to the Radio Vault Mystery Theater. I am the Keeper of the Keeper of the Vault. Many of us take for granted everyday blessings. The food we eat, having a roof over our heads, and sharing things with our loved ones. But there are those who live a life in quiet desperation until all things can be equal. Our story tonight is balance. Act 1. Little Shelby Corbin lived a nightmare with her drug-addicted prostitute of a mother who would do anything for her next fix. Her hunger burned because there was seldom food in the house for Shelley to eat because her mommy needed the money for her medicine. Shelley stayed hidden most of the time because she never knew when one of her mother's johns would come over. Shelley spent most of her days daydreaming and evenings filled with nightmares. I'm so tired of being hungry all the time. Just to have clean clothes and pretty flowers in the house. I hope none of Mommy's men find me tonight. I'm so tired. Stress from trying to survive is difficult and makes one very sleepy. Shelley was overcome by fatigue and fell asleep, unaware of who was watching her. As morning light arrived, her eyes blinked open. No one found me. I'm so happy. Wait a minute. It's too quiet. I am the leader of this group. I should talk to her. You only think you're the leader. I should talk to her first. I am the best at talking. I should talk to her. No, you both look far too frightening. I will talk to the child. No, we must take our turn. We are equals. Step aside, Coinin. I will find her and speak to her. You will not. It's my turn. Stop. She approaches. We must comfort her and not fight amongst ourselves. Very well. But this discussion is not over. <sighs> Quick, stand in front of her mother's body so she can't see. <laughs> Don't be frightened, child. I am going in. We won't harm you. We have come to help you. I am on you, little one. We are Pukas, the keepers of the balance. Mommy, you killed my mommy. No, child. It was one of the men who visit her. Sometimes stronger evil is necessary to restore justice in a life that isn't fair. This is the man who destroyed your mommy. His remembrance must be eliminated. Won't you put him on my horn? <coughs> now, to burn his remains with the flames from my hand. With the ash of his body, we christen you. You will now be known as Kalesh or Kaley. You'll be able to summon us from this day forward anytime balance needs to be restored. Shelley, who was now known as Kagi, was overcome and fainted into Fianat's arms and he gently laid her in her bed. Quinnen looked at his pocket watch and looked at the other two and nodded. The three pokers faded into the darkness. End of Act One. And now, Act Two. Kaya had been placed on foster care and was able to grow up in an environment that she had only dreamed of before. She was now an adult, had a steady job, and lived a balanced life on her own. The Bookers came to her one night in a dream. Gailey, it's time for balance to come again. 
What? Coinin? Yes, Kaylee. We restored balance to your life, and now you must restore balance to others. But I don't know how to do that. You have more power than you think, young woman. You have the power to summon us any time. You must refine your power, though. And it will cost you a great deal. What do you mean? If people see you summon us, they will not understand. They will see you as a witch. And not a force of peace and balance. <laughs> My life has been so good. How is this fair? Change is always frightening at first, but you must learn to embrace it. That's how balance is achieved, only through change and sacrifice. <sighs> what do I have to do? Incantations of balance? You must first know the contents of this book. Once you know the contents, you'll know how to summon us when needed. How will I even know when I need to summon you? It is in your heart, child. Yes, child, you were chosen to receive these powers because of the suffering you endured and still maintained a good heart. Your outcries came from a pure heart, and we heard them. But we can't hear them all like you can. If you are such a force for good, then why are you so hideous and scarred? <laughs> <laughs> My child, we are brothers and have been together through centuries. We have disagreements like our brothers. Often we disagree. It ends in fights and we leave scars. But in the end, we always restore balance. You're about to learn many new things. Remember to call Tak Dean Kohoyan. It's the fastest way to summon us. Tak Dean Coleman Hand? <laughs> <laughs> Keep practicing, and you'll get it right. The Pukas faded into the darkness. End of Act Two. And now, a word from our sponsor. In his spare time, he sits alone at a well known diner, waiting to be discovered. He has a check made out to himself for a million dollars, since that's how Jim Carrey did it. Disney is on his resume because he once visited the theme park. He thinks that having his picture taken with someone famous makes him famous. The phrase, it's all about who you know, doesn't apply to him, as he doesn't know anybody. He truly believes that if only Johnny Depp hadn't been cast, the role would have been his. He knows that once he upgrades his home studio, his booking ratio will skyrocket. His agent charges him a monthly fee and won't admit to knowing him. When competing for a job, he takes advice from his competitors. After paying thousands of dollars to discover his brand, he found out it was Wonder Bread. He's positive that his complete lack of training is offset by his overabundance of raw talent. If he's chosen in the top three, it's because he's the only one who auditioned. He is the least interesting actor in the world. I don't ever get cast, but I can quote you statistics on all of my failures. And now, Act 3. It wasn't long before Kaye knew the contents of the book. She started dressing in black and changing her appearance. She could hear the whispers behind her back as she walked by people. The day came when she was at work and her stomach started to rumble. She took an early lunch and took a walk. Oh, that poor man. He's so dirty, he's obviously homeless. But he has kind eyes. Please help. I've fallen on some bad times, just trying to get on my feet again. Tectin Kohioen. Oh 
Oh, stop! Stop! Forgive us, Kaylee. Kohorami Kohorami at Avanu. Kohorami at Avanu. Kohorami at Avanu. Wow, I must have dozed off. I was gonna go to lunch. Hi, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Kendrick Martin. I'm new to the company. Cal Harris, pleased to meet you. Have we met before? It seems like I know you from somewhere. Who knows, maybe we did. I'm glad to see that you found balance. I'm glad I'm here. I've gone through some tough times, but I think I found a job that fits finally. Wait, how do you know? I just do. Balance always prevails. Sometimes, saviors are not who we would expect. Balance always prevails. Balance is a production of Troop of Lost Souls Entertainment and Film Syndicate. Written by Charlie Mitchell and produced by Anthony Stopiello. Directed by Anthony Stopiello. Post-production and sound effects by Brian Collins. Commercials by Joe J. Thomas. Video post by Naruko Ito. Starring the vocal talents of Nova Walter as Shelley Corbin and Kaye Harris. Rick L. Baker as Koinen. Trevor Bates as Onchu. Terry Leonard as Fionat. Joe Thomas as Kendrick Martin. And I, well, I am J. Anthony McCarthy, Dr. Weiss, the keeper of the keeper of the vault. Remember to comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for listening. Please tune in next week and listen, if you dare. <laughs>